Hi. Listen to the notes generated after I play a chord. They're generated by a chain of MIDI effects. Welcome to part three of a series of videos about generative music making inspired by various artists. The first was inspired by Steve Reich's Phased Loops. The second by Brian Eno's Generative Music. And now this part three is about MIDI effects chains, mainly inspired by Olafur Arnold's player pianos. Olafur commissioned custom software that takes notes he plays on a piano or keyboard as MIDI, then echoes and changes these notes in real time based on different generative ideas and sends them off to be played on two separate player pianos. Now, to my knowledge, he doesn't share or sell that software, so what you heard now isn't a recreation of his work, but rather just an example to demonstrate the kind of dialogue that's possible between notes you play and a series of generative manipulations applied to them using MIDI effects being played back to you in your left and right ears. Now, I don't know if his software works this way. I'll show you how this particular patch works later in the video. This technique can also be used for generative music making beyond this example. In this video, I'll show you a few ideas that will hopefully spark your imagination using a DAW, DAWless tools, and modular environments. Let's start with the basics. What are MIDI effects? You're probably familiar with audio effects chains, like for example, taking audio coming out of a guitar or synth, processing it through a filter, then through distortion, and finally reverb. MIDI effects work differently. They take the data about the notes you play, namely pitch, velocity, and potentially MIDI CC values, or CV in modular environments, and then change, add, remove, or transform that information to something else, which can then be sent on to be played on whatever instrument you choose. For simplicity's sake, in this video, I'll be playing software instruments, but you could do this with hardware instruments or modular gear as well. Now, currently, unfortunately, you can't buy standalone MIDI effects like you'd buy guitar pedals. If you're using a DAW, it may have MIDI effects built in. For example, Ableton Live comes with a few bundled MIDI effects. And if you buy the full suite version, you also have access to Max for Live MIDI effects, both from Ableton as well as from third parties. In the Dallas space, many instruments have some MIDI effects. For example, you could look at the arpeggiator as a MIDI effect that takes a chord from one end, breaks it down to notes, and then plays them in various orders. A great example of a fantastic Dallas MIDI effects platform is Scorp's Pyramid, which I've reviewed on this channel, see link below. It has over a dozen MIDI effects and lets you create chains of up to five effects long. Another good standalone Dallas example is Boombox, which does require programming that isn't that straightforward, but it too can function as a MIDI effects box. In Eurorack or Modular, Hermod, also from Scorp, has plenty of MIDI effects and lets you chain up to eight of them. And of course, if you're a CV purist, there are a bunch of tools to manipulate CV notes, like adders, transposers, and quantizers. I'll show you an example of that later on. Other than the modular demo at the end of this video, I'll be using MIDI Hub to demonstrate a few MIDI effects chains ideas though most of these ideas are transferable to the other platforms I mentioned. Now, I was actually planning to make this video a couple of months ago with the tools I mentioned below, but then Blocus, the makers of MIDI Hub, reached out to me and invited me to its beta. And I was so blown away by this product that I decided to wait until it was available for pre-order, or if you're from the future and their crowdfunding campaign is a success, available for purchase. Now, they're not sponsoring this video, they didn't pay me anything, nor are the links to them below affiliate links, so there's nothing in it for me. So what is it? Blocus calls this MIDI hub, and indeed it can act like a hub, meaning that it can be a splitter and a merger. But as you'll see in a bit, it's way more than that. It's probably the most comprehensive MIDI effects platform I've ever seen that's actually usable by a non-programmer. You do need to create MIDI effects chains and routings on it using a computer, but you can save those routings in one of eight presets and then use MIDI Hub standalone without a computer. Now, all that mentioned, almost everything I showed you can be done one way or another in a doll like Ableton Live or with the dollless tools I mentioned before. So let's start with a simple example. I'll load up an empty preset. I've got key step plugged into MIDI input A right here. So to create a connection between key step and the piano virtual instrument on my DAW, what I need to do is take a MIDI input, drag it onto here. It's coming from MIDI input A and then drag a two USB output. USB A is fine as well. And now key step 
is connected to my virtual piano. So transpose is a simple MIDI effect. It's right here. I'll just drag that in between these two and then choose, say, 12 semitones. And now if I play the same five notes, they'll be transposed one octave or 12 semitones up. Let's delete that and choose a different one. Let's take the harmonizer effect. So the harmonizer effect, like I said, this exists in other platforms as well, simply takes the note that I play and adds additional notes to it at the intervals that I determine. So now when I send MIDI Hub a note, it will add harmonized notes, additional notes to it, creating a chord at the intervals that I determined. Now where it gets interesting is if we start chaining these effects one after the other. So for example, one of the problems with creating chords with harmonizers is that they don't adhere to a scale. So playing them up and down the keyboard may not give you the result you want. That's where putting a quantizer or scalar in the chain comes in really nicely. In MIDI Hub, that's the SC or scale remap module. And I wanna put that after my harmonized notes are added, right? So somewhere in between the two here in the chain. Now I could go ahead in here and pick the scale that I wanted, any one of these scales, or just create a custom scale to make sure that only the notes that I want get played. And the result is much more musical, of course, depending on taste. You can set this to whatever you want. Now, let's kick things up a notch. One of the neat things you can do with MIDI effects chains is create parallel chains and then apply different MIDI effects to each chain. In a DAW, you would route MIDI to a different track and then add MIDI effects to that track. In modular, you can use a buffered mult. And here in MIDI Hub, you can use virtual ports to split chains and create new ones. So rather than send my MIDI to the USB port, I'll add a virtual port, right? And you can choose a number of these. Virtual A is good enough for me. And now I can add another effects chain. The first thing I wanna do is keep what I had before, right? So route the notes from chain A to USB A. So I still have what I had before. And I stuck some reverb on that for fun. Anyway, now I can take those same notes, create another chain, and then add different effects on top of that. So for example, let's take an arpeggiator MIDI effect, and then why not transpose this up an octave, and then send that out to USB as well. Now the arpeggiator in this case won't work unless we send it clock. Luckily we have a clock module and we'll send that to our virtual A chain, to this chain. It'll send it to both, but it'll work here as well. So now I still get my original chord if I press a key, but I'll get an arpeggiated pattern in parallel one octave up. So this is nice, but what if I wanted to play a different instrument with the arpeggiated pattern? Well, right now I have the piano set on MIDI channel one, and I also have a synth set on MIDI channel three. The question is, how do I separate the two? I can do that with a channel remap pipe or module, right? So I'll stick that in here, and then make sure that anything that goes through this chain goes only to channel three. And now, right, I have my synth on channel three and the piano on channel one. Now, just to complete this example, what if I wanted the chord to be held, right? I don't wanna hold my finger here all the time. Well, luckily we have a sustain pipe right here, right? So I take that, stick it right after the MIDI coming in from the keyboard right into here. And then what I wanna do is put it in chord mode. And then once I turn sustain on, it'll just hold on to the notes. You can also MIDI map any of the parameters in MIDI Hub or in your DAW, of course, using a MIDI controller. That's why this guy has been here all the time. Just think of this as a regular MIDI controller. Ignore the Eurorack stuff. So for example, if I wanted to 
control the sustain with this button. So now this button controls sustain and it's not in toggle mode, so I need to press this down to get sustain, but I could just do this and right, sustain the chords. And then just release this and sustain is off. So until we get standalone MIDI effects pedals, hopefully just like we have guitar pedals, it's nice to have a MIDI controller alongside your DAW or this to change parameters. Let's look at another example. So I want to edit the arpeggiation speed. I could map, uh, let's say the time division to this fader. So as I play the pattern, I could slow it down or speed it up right? using external control. So I think that's pretty cool. Now it's beyond the scope of this video to go over all the effects in MIDI Hub or everything that's available in Ableton Live and so on. I'll just show you one more little neat trick this can do. So let's start with a fresh preset and create a basic chain. And like I said, there are a bunch of nice things here like a randomizer and chance function, um, even a micro tuning scale function, MCR scale. This is actually pretty smart. If your synth doesn't have support for microtuned scales, you can load Scala scales into this and it will use pitch bend to create scales on synths that don't support microtuning. Anyway, the interesting generative function that I wanted to show you was note remap. So what this does, if I set it to invert the notes that I play. So now as I play notes up the keyboard, it'll play the inverted notes. So that's confusing, right? But if we remove this and create a parallel chain, right? Using virtual ports like we did before, and then play the notes that I send as is, but only have a remapped chain alongside it, right? So this will play, this is the normal chain and this is the remapped chain. I now have these playing simultaneously. Now this is still a bit messy, but we can get pretty interesting results if we apply a scalar to the inverted notes. Now I wanna remap these to channel three. Now I'll be using the same piano sound for both chains. I just wanted you to be able to see it clearly in the visualizer. And then the last thing I wanted to add is a filter. This isn't a filter like you'd expect an audio filter, but rather it's a filter for MIDI events. And I want to be able to filter on and off notes being turned on and off so that I can turn the effect on and off. So for starters, when the filter is on, this entire chain won't be heard, right? So I'll just play this simple pattern. that impressive. But if I turn the filter off, which means I won't be bypassing this chain, I know it's a little bit confusing, but bear with me, then listen to that pattern again with these added inverted notes that are scaled. So suddenly I'm a much better piano player than I really am. So hopefully that sort of explains what I mean by this sort of generative piano player that you have a dialogue with as you play notes in real time. Now, to make sure modular users don't feel left out, just because you're using control voltage doesn't mean you can't enjoy MIDI-like effects chains. Let's also try and improve our newfound keyboard skills with some note manipulation. This won't give you Jordan Rudis like speed and consistency, but hopefully it will get us all a bit closer. So this is what a MIDI effects like patch looks like in Eurorack or VCV rack. Obviously we're using control voltage here, but the principles are the same. This patch, by the way, will be available to download on my Patreon, though you could easily recreate this if you pause the video and copy the modules along with all the routings. All these modules are free on VCV. So the idea behind this silly patch is that no matter which keys I press and the timing with which I press them, they'll always be in time and in scale. So I can just mash notes around here. and they perfectly fit a pentatonic scale and are in time with whatever clock I have going on, which in this case is this LFO, right? So the faster this goes, the faster my clock 
and the more superhuman my skills. So how does this work? Well, I've got MIDI notes coming out of this keyboard, but it could be CV as well. That's sent to a MIDI to CV module, which is sending out both CV and gate. You can only hear notes when I press a key because gate is being sent to this AND logic gate, which will only trigger my envelope if both a key is pressed and the LFO triggers. Right, so that's what an AND gate does. The control voltage or pitch is sent out of the CV of the MIDI to CV module and into an adder. The reason I'm sending it to an adder first is because I'll use this LFO later on for a purpose which I'll show you, but let's ignore that for now. That CV is then sent to a quantizer, which will make sure any note I play adheres to a scale. In this case, it's the pentatonic scale. That gets sent to a sample and hold module. I'll explain why in a bit again, and then to my VCO. So the result of that is notes that are in scale and at the right timing. So what's this business with the sample and hold module and the LFO? I'm using the triangle output of the LFO and I wanna, instead of work hard with my fingers, have the LFO play the notes for me. So to actually hear the effect of the LFO, I passed it through a VCA so I can disable it whenever I want. Right? But if I bring that VCA up, Right? I sort of get this arpeggiation pattern using the LFO. The reason I'm using the sample and hold module is because the triangle LFO goes up and down on a linear path, if I didn't freeze it for every note, the notes would sound slewed. So just to bring this full circle into an even more complex chain, I wanna show you the patch that I started this video with, the echoing pianos. So remember the patch that does this thing? So there are obviously multiple ways to build this. What I did is send the notes to a dispatcher first. What this module does is sends every next note in a round robin style to different MIDI channels. This lets me create different chains and add variety for every other fourth note, right? So the first note gets sent to this chain, then this chain, this chain, and so on. Now the chains are pretty similar here, but I could put anything I wanted in any chain for even more variety. The principle though is pretty simple. There's a delay which repeats a note, but at lower levels. Then there's a simple randomizer that either transposes a note an octave up or an octave down. And then I apply chance to that delay so that the notes won't sound every time, but rather play every now and then. Now I have the chance in each of these chains MIDI mapped to these four faders, right? So I can play with how many raindrop notes I want using these four delay lines. I could also potentially map four additional faders to the delay rates, right? So notes will repeat at different rates every time. Yeah, that's basically how that works, right? So if I want a lot of delays, I'll bring all these up. Right, and if I want fewer delays, I'll maybe bring some down. Then if I don't want any or just a few, I'll turn them down even lower. And like I mentioned before, for extra polyrhythmic fun, I could change the delay rates of each of these lines. I could also apply a MIDI LFO. There are modules like that here to modulate that over time for some real craziness. If you'd like to see more videos in this generative series, let me know in the comment section below. And if you have artists you'd like me to check out and be inspired by, that would be nice too. If you want every single tip, trick, and idea in my videos neatly summarized in one place, check out my book available to people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful and ring the notification bell to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks very much for watching.